This is Sandra Porter, and I'm going to show you how you can find salt bridges, also known as ionic bonds, using ICN3D. First, I'm going to begin by getting a smaller structure. Look for 3R0L, which codes, which uh, is a structure for um, rattlesnake toxin, which is kind of fun. Then we're going to open up the analysis menu so you can see the sequence and open up details. So I see the sequence here. And I can see this has three protein chains and a short peptide right there. I also see there are some, um, if I scroll down, I can see there's a chlorine and there's a couple different manganese ions and a sodium ion. So there's some other things in the structure as well. But to see our salt bridges, what we're gonna do is open the analysis menu. We're gonna choose interactions. And then we need to change the default settings here. We're gonna get rid of, we don't wanna see hydrogen bonds or halogen bonds or pi cations or contacts or pi stacking. We do wanna see salt bridges, but we're gonna change this to four. These numbers stand for angstroms. So I'm going to look for things that are either four angstroms or less apart. And I'm going to pick my um, the ID for my structure so that I can find all the ionic bonds or salt bridges, that is, that are in the structure. If I wanted to look at interactions between specific chains, I could pick those instead. OK, now I'm going to click 3D Display Interactions. And we're gonna look at the structure. You can see I have actually highlighted some metals here. We're gonna ignore those because we're just looking for salt bridges between amino acids. So we'll ignore those. And I will change the coloring style to color by charge for now. So I'm picking charge. So I can see the things that have a negative charge and the amino acids that have a positive charge and amino acids like histidine that have a positive charge, but not as much of a positive charge. Okay, so to find a salt bridge, we have to find a case where one amino acid has a positive charge and another has a negative charge. And there can be more than one amino acid involved, as we'll see in a couple minutes. All right, so I see there's one right here that meets our, meets our criteria. You can see there's a glutamic acid right here, and there is an arginine right there. So we're gonna look at that a little bit closer. So what I did is just to click option and clicked it. So I'm clicking option and selecting that arginine, and I hold down my control key and click to select Actually, I'm going to toggle the highlight, get rid of my selections. Try this again. Zoom in a little bit, make that easier. I hold the option key down, click arginine. I hold the control key down, and I'll click the glutamic acid. So now I've got two amino acids selected, and those have got this kind of turquoise bond in between, which is the salt bridge. Okay, to look at these a little bit more, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this, change the um, side chains and make them ball and stick. And I'm gonna color this by atom. So I can see here that I've got oxygens. One of, there can be a negative charge. It can alternate between these. This is my carboxyl group. And here I've got um, nitrogens on the arginine. Now what I'm going to do is change the drawing style to show these as a sphere. So you can see even better how they're interacting. So I've got my positively charged arginine interacting with my negatively charged glutamic acid. And I can look at these alone by saying view selection. And then I can zoom out. and capture a screen image. Okay, if we go back now and we say clear selection, 
and we look at our entire protein, we can see some other examples of ionic bonds in here as well. So here's one here where there's a histidine. Sometimes you have to have the cursor right exactly over the right spot to see what it is. So now I see it's histidine 47, and that's interacting with the uh, aspartic acid. I'm going to select that histidine. And I missed, so I'm going to toggle the highlight and try again. There we go. And I'm going to select the aspartic acid that it's interacting with. Okay, got it. Oops. I can do that. Okay, and now I'm going to take these and we'll just take a look to see what this looks like. We'll make these, we'll just make these sphere. And I'm going to color by atom so you can see the atoms that are interacting, the elements that are interacting. Okay, and we'll get rid of the highlight. Okay, so now what I can see is that my aspartic acid, I've got the carboxyl group here, and I can see that there's the ring with the, with the histidine, and I can see that I've got one of the oxygens is interacting with the nitrogen on the histidine ring. And we know these nitrogens can have a positive charge. So that's another example of an ionic bond. Lastly, I want to show you one different one that shows up in here. There's more than that, but I want to show you uh, another kind of thing that can happen. And that is that we can have ionic bonds between multiple amino acids. So here's a case here where I've got a glutamic acid that is forming an ionic bond or salt bridge. I can use either term a salt bridge with two arginines. So I'm going to select all of these. Select all of these and view these as a sphere and change the color to atom. So it presents each atom with its element coloring style. And actually I'm gonna say view selection, we'll just get rid of everything else. And you can see here that I've got the glutamic acid, here's the carboxyl group, and these oxygens can have a negative charge, they alternate between them, and you can see that they can interact with the nitrogens on either one of these arginines. And that's it.